The at media rule allows conditional styling of elements. The conditions can be based on the type of media or known characteristics of the device being used. Combining media queries with fluid layout and flexible images allows us to implement responsive web design. In this episode, we'll look at how media queries can be used to change the styling of websites based on querying information about the device, and two approaches for tackling page layout in responsive design. Sometimes we only want certain styles to apply on certain types of device or when certain characteristics of the device are true. For example, we might want to remove the header and footer when printing out a web page. Using the query print will restrict the styles of the at rule to the print media type. Other media types include all, braille, embossed, handheld, projection, screen, speech, TTY and TV. The only two media types I use are print and screen, which is a bit of a catch-all for any screen-based device, including mobile devices, TV and projection. We can check more fine-grained detail about the device being used by passing a query into the media rule. A common property to query is the min width of the browser window. In this example, the initial font size for all devices is 0.75 EM. But if the device has a minimum width of 600 pixels, is 600 pixels or wider, then the font size will be increased to 1M. There's a number of things that we can query about the device. Width, height, device width, device height, orientation, aspect ratio, device aspect ratio, resolution, color, color index, monochrome, scan, or grid. Many of these have a corresponding min and max variety as well. I use min width and max width a lot. Orientation, aspect ratio, and resolution occasionally, and min height and max height from time to time. I've never used the others as far as I can remember. Width is by far the most common thing to query about the device, but as the reported width and device width are often different, it's necessary to add the following meta tag to your HTML, which will make them equivalent. The initial scale is set to prevent devices zooming out to fit the whole site in the viewport. It's possible to set maximum scale to 1, but then this removes the ability for a user to pinch and zoom a web page, which isn't good user experience. It's possible to combine queries together using the AND keyword. It's also possible to use negation with NOT and limit applicability using only. These media blocks can contain any CSS you'd write elsewhere in the style sheet and cascade the same way too. This means you'll likely not have to write that much CSS to change the design for multiple devices. As media queries allow the conditional styling when certain device characteristics are true, we can use them to control the styling of a page across a range of different devices or device sizes. We can control fine grained details or big picture layout. It's common for websites viewed on large screen devices to have multiple columns of text and images, but this would be impossible to read on a screen one fifth of the width. As building and modifying complex layouts is time consuming, let's use a simple example of four boxes to represent four sections of a page. Without any styles applied, the images and text stack on top of each other. We can space them out a bit and add some borders and backgrounds to make them stand out a bit more. As the screen gets wider, the layout looks a bit stretched and the small amount of text starts looking odd compared to the size of the image. At around 500 pixels, we could add a media query to create a two column layout instead of a one column layout. As the screen gets wider again, 
we could probably fit in four columns, so could change the width of each box to 25% instead. Because of how CSS styles cascade, we don't need to specify float left each time. This approach of starting with the small screen and adding styles to make a more complicated layout is known as mobile first, as coined in the book of the same name by Luke Grabluski. It's possible to go in reverse as well, desktop first, and start with the more complex layout. In this case, we'd start with the boxes floated and 25% wide, and use max width media queries to override the styles for smaller screens. This leads to a small amount more CSS, but can sometimes be easy to get your head around. However, if possible, I think it's best to start mobile first, as it focuses the thinking about design and development from the outset, and reduces the risk of needing to shoehorn a complex layout onto a tiny screen. It took me a while to get used to mobile first, but it's definitely my go-to approach these days.